This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse95. Yes, welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar al I am your host, cover everything sport, international and local. Thank you very much for tuning in with me today, wherever you are around the world. Feeling really good about today's show. Plenty to talk about. I was thinking about this last night. There's a lot of things that's happening at the moment now, and we don't always follow the, the, the usual sports. So we thought we'd take a different turn to it today. And, uh, and go over a couple of things. Right, we all have goals in health and fitness, but could it be as simple as logging things down in an app out of all things? Now, I'm going to share with you a personal experience that's opened my eyes to mistakes I was making in nutrition and fitness. So that's something we're going to be talking about today. We spoke about that with the uh, Future Talk team earlier, and I can't wait to share that with you because it, it opened my eyes to a lot of things. Climbing mountains has always been good for the gram. But how much fitness mentally and physically is required? We look at one of the deadliest mountains out there in K2, uh, having a few people missing at the moment down to attempting to climb that mountain in winter, which is the first time it's happened last month. And they've actually stopped the searching um, for these people. So families are very worried. We're speaking about that later on. And also, the UFC is getting itself ready for a packed few months. But which fights will stand out in your eyes? We're talking all that and more on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95. Sure is that time. If you're just tuning in, you're wondering... What is going on on the Halftime Show? We've got a lot of stuff we're talking about today. Could an app be the solution to our problems when it comes down to logging your nutrition plans? I'm talking about that today. You saw Omnia Saleh and uh, Aisha Al-Mazmi doing their thing here during the break, always adding light to the studio. And thank you very much for tuning in. Um, Wavy Money says, what song was playing? Well... Afro B and T-Pain Condo, which is a great track. Love that track. That was just playing now on the radio. Right, okay, so one of the things a lot of people normally say they're going to switch up when it comes down to health, fitness, nutrition is, you know, their food, their meal plans. And obviously, if you're know, if you not a whiz like me, uh, actually, I'm so not a whiz when it comes to nutrition. If you're not a whiz like Maria, then um, you probably, you know, sometimes find it a bit challenging. So one of the things we were doing recently is I was thinking about all these different apps that you can log in your information, actually put down what you're eating. Now, the good thing is once you actually put down what you're eating in these apps, it tells you how many calories it is. Now, from that point, eye open is not even the word. Um, I, I, put in, I put in the food, the amount, the grams, etc., and it comes out. And I'll tell you something, right? We don't realize how many calories is in a meal that you would probably go and get today whether it's delivery, whether you pick it up from somewhere, whether you even make it at home. And I'm sighing just thinking about it. Once you put these things down, so for example, I'll just give you an example. I use MyFitnessPal, all right? So I, I switch on to MyFitnessPal, I go on, they have a barcode there. You can scan the barcode of the packet. It tells you kind of where you're at. But when you look at the end of the day and you complete the diary, it actually tells you how many calories you've consumed versus the exercise that you do so you can obviously put in i don't know you train boxing and you burn a thousand calories now you add that to um, the food that you have and you realize you're either in a deficit or in a plus and that's kind of how it works but how did this hold me accountable let me tell you before obviously uh, you know i get hungry so I, I'm, I'm always eating but the thing is you realize how many calories you're consuming once you've actually put things down now it always helps to journal things not just in nutrition but in fitness, when it comes down to all these different things. But when I actually use this app, that's when logging in the food can be, I mean, you know, you've got to have some patience and you've got to have the willpower to actually put down everything you eat and it does become a habit. But one thing it does do, it opens your eyes to the amount of calories that's in the food. And that's exactly what I was doing. Now I thought about it. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is accountability. A lot of the times we tell ourselves, and I think Jim Quick said it best. He said, we always know what to do, but we don't always do what we know. And it's very easy to give advice because we're the best at giving advice. But when it comes down to ourselves, who holds us accountable? This app held me accountable. So all of a sudden now, while I'm actually at, let's say, lunch or dinner or on the go, I'm actually entering the food that's in there to see whether I can actually justify eating it. Now, it does get obsessive. Some people say that's a bit too much. You know, you should you should be able to enjoy a meal. Yes, absolutely. Enjoy the meal. 
But when you reach a point like I've reached, where you're like, I don't get why this weight is not shifting off. This makes you realize exactly why. So I want to know, do you guys use, I just want to know, do you guys, uh, <laughs> do you guys use apps? And if you do, what kind of apps to use? Text me on 4215, it's a salat or do, or slide into my DMs at Omar Alduri and let me know. Do they do they make a difference to you? Do they hold you accountable? I've, ta- I've spoken about heart rate uh, monitors before. I've spoken about tracking devices as well to see what kind of calories are going in versus going out. And I've also spoken about, you know, different technology that sometimes could be just as beneficial as hindering on your performance but what do you guys use let me know coming up next now mountain climbing has always been something that people have been interested in then it became something of what a trend where people would like to go hiking and climbing etc but what if it was a matter of life and death Uh, missing k2 climbers are on alert as their families have reported climbers gone missing Uh, Normally, there are seasons for it, but some people decided to go against that recently and go in the winter where the the, uh, search parties have actually stopped looking because it's too dangerous to do so. And I'm asking you, in winter, would you go climbing? Have you ever been on a huge uh, climb, Kilimanjaro, all these amazing, incredible things? And is it... Is it something that's safe? 4215 at the Salat or do? Here's some blessings, a little bit of a remix for you, and I'll be right back after this. Enjoy. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri on Pulse95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri, your boy and your host, covering all things health, fitness, sports. And on the show today, we were talking about are we overcomplicating our nutrition plans and could an app actually hold you accountable for you know, all the things we kind of choose not to see. If you missed the show, don't worry, you can catch our podcast on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, or on Gami. Or if you prefer a visual, head over to the YouTube channel, check out Pulse95 Radio. We've got all our episodes with all our guests. Shout out to everyone who's tuned in, from Seth to Ghalia to Tariq to um, Mufid. You had you had Sam, you had Louise as well. Shout out to everyone who's listening. Thank you very much. Right, on, on a serious note now, you know, a lot of people do a lot of these climbs and um, hikes and, and all these kind of things all around the world. And one of the things that, yes, it might be nice for the gram and everything like that, but then sometimes things get serious. And there are seasons that you stay away from these things. And normally people avoid them in the winter, mainly for the fact you can't really spot people that easily. So one of the things that came up in, uh, in the articles, Maria sent this to me actually, is the missing K2 climbers. Now, if you haven't heard about this, K2 is the second largest mountain and um, families say only a miracle can bring back the families of the people missing from the K2 climbers. Um, you know, it's Pakistani climber Ali Sadpara, John Snorri of Iceland and Juan Pablo Moore of Chile lost contact with the base camp on the 5th of February. Now, families of these three mountainers missing in Pakistan since last week grew more desperate as a search stopped due to bad weather and that's why normally they don't recommend for people to do the climbs in winter now um, it's the second highest mountain and these climbers had completely lost contact with everyone they were reported missing the next day for those that don't know K2 is located in the Karkurum mountain range and is 8,611 meters 28,250 feet high so for those people that you know enjoy climbing you could definitely appreciate how mad that is you know doing that k2 has never been climbed during the winter until last month when a team of 10 nepalese climbers made history by scaling it for the first time in the harshest weather the three-day search for the climbers was halted on 8th of february as heavy loads um, enveloped most of k2 now pakistani military helicopters were grounded waiting for an opening in the weather to resume the search but it's just it's so it's, it's so worrying especially now with what we're going through in the world and everything like that is yes get outside and and go do things and be active and everything that's that's fantastic but you just gotta be very very weary very very careful of you know these kind of things and yeah it might be nice for the gram unless you're serious climbers or even serious hikers precautions you got you gotta take caution to all these things it's very very important that you know we can uh, we can be we can be mindful of the task at hand and that's why people don't normally you know climb in winter especially when you can't spot people if you're just tuning in on the show and you want to wonder what we're talking about now 
Are we overcomplicating our nutrition plans? And can you be held accountable by a fitness app? Now, there's plenty of fitness apps out there. We've spoken about that today. That's the question of the day. And I was asking if you guys, you know, use any apps and stuff. I'll tell you one thing, the app that I was using, it definitely held me accountable because once I entered the food that I was eating in the app, it just made me realize how many calories is in that food. Now, again, not to get too obsessive with it, there's so many things behind that, which you could say, you got to be careful. Don't, don't get carried away. But it does hold you accountable. We're normally the best at giving advice and giving advice to everyone out there. But when it comes down to us, we don't always follow our advice. And Jim Quick, Quick said it best. We all know what to do, but we don't always do what we know. Um, shout out to everyone who is tuned in on my Instagram live. At Omar Duri Ish is in the building. Masoud, you've got Eve who was on the show the other day. Great episode. If you haven't checked it out, check it out on YouTube. You've got Louise, Ibrahim, Mufid, Shadi, Dr. Naz, Tariq, uh, Ghalia, Seth. Obviously, my mom, Fatima al as well, who's tuned in. And everyone else. So, guys, yeah, let me know. What do you guys do to hold yourself accountable when it comes to nutrition I mean I'm not always in the kitchen so I'll be the first person to say I have no idea what's going on in my food unless it's actually planned scheduled and you know looked at with a little bit of detail but I say a little bit of detail so that's kind of like the main thing you guys let me know 4215 with the slot or do coming up next we're talking the fight game UFC fight fans I'll tell you now with what's happening with Usman and Burns, you do want to make sure you watch that event. Stay tuned for the only place to be at 3, the Halftime Show on Pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar al on Pulse 95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show with Omar al Nia was flying out of here like no one's business. We were, she was telling me about um, the show the other day on uh, the Halftime Show when I asked you guys how do you spend the first hour of your day and then I gave you a couple of options and I said right what I want you to do is try and do one of the options I've given you for the whole hour there's four different boxes if you haven't checked it out check out that show it was really good and she was actually talking about the stuff she implemented in it now sustaining it was one of the hardest things in building that first hour because normally we have a routine but the fact you had options to fill in the first 15 versus the 20 versus the 10 versus the 15 kind of helped you get through that first hour now practice was one of the things you know um that i i uh i got a a few people tagging me like lauren for example shout out to lauren a little fire she um she actually tried it waking up an hour early or even a couple of hours early to try and start her day off and gave her a lot of energy in that day but the thing that I, i ask you guys when you add these things to your lifestyle now everyone's obviously got their own circumstances work kids family Is it hard to sustain it and how long do you keep practicing it until you then switch it up a bit and that was my my question for you guys if you're just tuning in on the show today what have you missed well we're talking about how an app can hold you accountable for your nutrition and from personal experience it definitely opened my eyes to what i was consuming in terms of calories but also to the point where just gives me an idea of where i'm at at the moment especially that i have a lot to to achieve um, and I'm a bit far away from that, but I'm working on it. So that was one thing we were speaking about in terms of the apps. K2 climbers have gone missing at the moment. K2 is the second uh, largest mountain in the world. And unfortunately, people normally don't advise to to climb in the winter uh, for that specific reason. Now, the search parties have stopped searching, obviously, because it's not safe for them to get out there. So imagine if it's not safe for the search parties, how is it safe for the climbers? Um, we spoke about that. Now we're going to talk about a little bit of fight game. Um, Bro, what did I miss? Masoud, that's what you missed. (laughs) You missed the fact that we were talking about uh, an app that's going to hold you accountable uh, for your nutrition, the K2 Climbers. And now we're talking about UFC. And now at the moment, I think when Conor was going to fight against Dustin Poirier, everyone was going crazy because everyone expected Conor to win. And then as soon as that happened, they were thinking of Conor Habib and coming out of retirement. Now Conor lost and then Poirier is obviously in contention to, you know, um, you know, get a title shot now, finally. So a lot of things have kind of evolved in that sense. John Jones is another one people are talking about. Israel Desanya, another one people are talking about. What's next for them? It's going to be a huge year for them. I doubt they'll fight each other, but if they did, how incredible would that be, let's say, at the end of the year? Then I'm calling it for you guys. Um, we've also got Usman versus Burns. Now, it's funny when we're talking about rivalries and you see Kamara Usman versus Kobe Covington, the, the, the rivalry, the hatred behind them. This is where the reality of it really checks in because sometimes you see certain fighters that are building up the fight to sell it 
and they'll come on and and you know say things and be disrespectful and push each other around and whatever that's fine but when it comes down to Usman and Burns this is kind of a different feel to it Usman's all, like normally delivered and that's why he's at the top of his game at the moment but is there anyone there that can actually challenge Usman especially with the camp that they have uh, Ali Abdul Aziz their manager as well the team that they have is stacked at the moment looking at all those different fighters imagine them sparring and and, and mixing the skill set from the speed to the power to even things like mobility and um endurance if you've got a heavier guy that's actually putting all that weight on you when you're wrestling when you're grappling when you're doing your jiu-jitsu versus the striking and the striking coaches they have there at the team all these people with all these champions from all around the world together in one organization so who's going to challenge Usman that's another thing and who's next for this year um, that's regarding UFC but you see this is what I'm saying with all the things that are out there at the moment now I think this week, let's say football-wise, it hasn't been that great. It's FA Cup week. Cricket's been interesting. Rugby's been interesting. Scotland being England. Um, I'm sure they were very, very happy with that because it hasn't happened since 1983. And then you've got basketball as well. You know, um, some sports. Taking a back seat to kind of watch and observe what's going on. WWE has also been something that I've actually, I might be interviewing um, Billy Kay uh, tonight. So you might see it on Saturday or you might see it next week. Um, all the different characters we have in in all these sports make it really, really interesting. So what would you like to see more of on the show when it comes down to content, when it comes down to guests even? And I know you're going to probably say Cristiano, probably going to say Lionel Messi, um, maybe even Habib, which Habib spends a lot of time in the UAE. I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to get him on the show. Um, definitely, I'd send him my location any day so he can come on. Uh, but that's, that's what I'm saying. So there's all these different fighters all these different athletes that are very very interesting in terms of mindset in terms of getting them on the show what would you like to see more of uh, let me know slide into my dms at omar duri and tell me what you want to hear coming up next we're taking your questions and answers and also going over Bayern munich versus al ahli yes you heard it right shout out to thea and zaid who just joined the room and of course divya don't go anywhere folks stay tuned for the only place to be at three the halftime show on pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adori on Pulse 95. It sure is that time. It's the Halftime Show. Thank you very much for keeping me company today. If you're just tuning in and wondering where you can catch the shows, if you prefer a podcast, head over to Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, or Angami. Or if you prefer a visual, head over to the YouTube channel at Pulse95 Radio. And we've got all of our shows with all the great presenters here and some fantastic guests talking about some really important topics uh, on the radio. Right, okay. The show today was interesting because we were talking about are we overcomplicating our nutrition plans? And something that worked for me was an application I was using to be able to actually log the foods. But also when you type in the food that you eat it tells you how many calories it was now some people can say that's a bit too much but listen when you have a lot to lose like myself you can put that on there and it gives you an indication of where you're at because we're always the best at giving advice to people and and, and 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 offering that kind of information to everyone but when it comes down to us you know if you're sneaking in a bag of chips or, or something that you shouldn't be eating you, when you put that down it all tallies up and you see at the end of the day how much you think even if you're exercising like crazy even if you're if you're running or you're boxing or you're ice skating or you're doing anything that involves a lot of activity that's something that you know you cannot out train a bad diet that is something I've heard a long time ago and it's something that I believe until today and I'm an example of that because if my nutrition isn't on point uh, shout out to Maria then I am not um achieving my goals for sure uh we also spoke about the k2 climbers uh three climbers have gone missing who normally it's advised not to be climbing in winter they went against that and the search parties have stopped searching because it wasn't safe for the search parties to go out and look for them so families are very very concerned about that we spoke about ufc fight talk as well and before i was leaving the house today my mom said don't forget to mention Al Ahli versus Bayern Munich. So, so mom, this is for you. Um, if you're wondering, you know, I did watch the game the other day. Bayern Munich did face Al Ahli, and it was something that we looked at and thought this could be a mullering. And Al Ahli fans will probably say, no, we're the most successful team. We won all the trophies, etc. And yes, rightfully so. It comes to the Club World Cup. In the past, it hasn't always been taken as seriously. What's nice about the situation now is a lot of these 
teams are taking it seriously. And you saw the the, the stars like Lewandowski and, and Gnabry and and uh, and Muller and all these people playing for Bayern Munich versus Al Ahly. One thing I would have maybe been a, a little bit critical of, um, and Al Ahly fans, don't jump at me yet, but I would be is is I think Al Ahly showed too much respect to Bayern Munich. That's the only thing I, w- I wish they would have had a bit more of a go. Now sometimes we think. Be a bit more prag- pragmatic in your approach when you're sending out a team and you're coaching them to play against the European champions and the world champions soon. You know, just don't get embarrassed. And I think, I think Al Ahly definitely held themselves, you know, strong in the fight for, you know, a good contest. But I wish they would have had a bit more of a go. It would have been good to kind of see them score and and, and be happy and, and give the Egyptian fans something to to celebrate for. Uh, but Bayern Munich, I mean, unbelievable. Uh, the job that the coach has done, the manager, the fact that they they normally win their league quite early and therefore, you know, concentration-wise, fitness levels-wise, they all kind of fall off apart from last year on, in the Champions League. So what's nice to see about Bayern Munich is they're still very, very consistent. Shout out to Rawan uh, Kulthum who are just joining in. Uh, Yunus, Mustafa, Ahmed uh, and everyone else who is connected with me now. We are reaching full time. Where's that? Where's that full time whistle? Yes, on the halftime show. It has been and I'm so happy that we got a chance to spend it with you today. Remember, you can catch up every Monday, Wednesday and Saturday on Pulse 95 in the heart of Sharjah. Guys, I'm going to play you some come through music. Uh, Summer Walker. I hope you enjoy it and I will be back sooner than later on Saturday. World Radio Day is Saturday as well, which is uh, something I'm looking forward to uh, with you guys. Make sure I see you there. I will see you soon. Take care. Love and blessings. Peace. If you liked this episode of The Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories. Bye-bye.